Steve Young is really amazing. And, you know, he, he he's going to be one of the ones to tell you that you've been lied to. You've been lied to by our government. You've been lied to by Big Pharma. You've been lied to. I didn't to. know that. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows <laughs> that. And, and Steve has a very unique look at it. And I'm not saying unique as it's in. It's not proven. This is like he has been a masterful study under this practice for so many years. So today he's going to share us share with us some simple, actionable things that we can do right now. Three things that you can do that will change the way you live forever for the better. Steve taught me about three, four years ago, the concept of eating the rainbow. And this is a concept I still stick to today, and that is that you eat the rainbow, right? All the colors of the vegetables and fruits. You just eat the rainbow. The more colors, the better. He's also going to tell you that diets just don't work. The standard diet discipline is false. It doesn't work. There's a reason why will and strong will doesn't make it work. You know, there's a reason why we give up. We start New Year's resolutions in January. And then in February, mid-February, maybe March, maybe we're still hanging on to half of it or none of it. And that's just human nature. And it's because we go about it wrong. And what Steve has taught me is the 80-20 rule. And maybe he'll touch on the 80-20 today. Because if you really, you know, if you look at it that way, it's so much more doable. If we have a goal to be healthier, if we have a goal to have a stronger immune system, if we have a goal to live longer, if we have a goal to just all out feel better, have better sex, be able to work out longer, harder, stronger, we got to pay attention to our bodies. And you are all blessed to be able to have an expert that understands far more about this than I ever could imagine. Steve, so happy to have you, man. I'm so honored that you're going to spend some time with the Go Mobile community today. Thank you for showing up. How are you, buddy? Say hi. Awesome. Hey. Yeah, super happy to be here to be able to share uh, some entertaining stories. And I'm a huge fan of uh, making things very actionable. So absolutely, with this content, uh, one, I want to be interactive. It's just boring to hear myself talk for a while. So feel free if you have any questions, and I'll, I'll be asking questions. Um, and two, there's so much I could, I mean, I could talk like um, weeks on what I really want to cover. So I'm kind of chunking things down so they're simple and actionable on your end. All right? And so um, – And Steve, just a real quick housekeeping question. Do you mind if anybody interrupts and asks questions as you go along, or would you prefer no. they actually wait till the end for that? I, or not end, but when you're ready. Yeah, I, I am uh, completely feel to bitch slap me and stop me as I'm talking. It's completely fine. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I oh. want this I want this to be a discussion versus just me going blah blah blah. Okay, cool. Well, David yep. Arnold, good to see you. Good to see you, Sam Weir. Good to have a conversation with you the other day. Steve Weber, my man. What's up? What's up? Mark <laughs> Labuda, good to see you on. Just saying hi real quick, Steve, to a few. Nice. So yeah, yeah. I know we can count on you for some good notes today. You'll find, uh, Steve, she likes to take notes. <coughs> when you Very drop the nuggets, she'll drop the notes, which is pretty <laughs> awesome. Good to see you, Greg. Judy, how are you, Judy? Good to see you. All right. Back to you, Steve. Let's have some fun. Let's, uh, you know, as you know, my wife and I, um, I shouldn't say my wife and I, it's my wife. She's been battling COVID. We got struck with COVID, uh, in fact, 14 days ago on Friday as we were starting our happy hour with our fellow friend, Jeremy Shapiro. I had to do my quick little introduction and I said, bye. We had to get her going on some therapy and start, you know, really just start getting into the game. Mm -hmm. And here we are 14 days later, Steve, and an update for you. Uh, we got faked out last Saturday. Last Saturday, she came out after 24 hours of yeah. no fever, totally faked out, felt like we were on the other end of it. And then Sunday, bam, back down hard, three days of hard fight. Uh, we had two days of no fever now, 
And then it seemed like uh, today it was coming back around again. So she's on a 14-day battle, but the good news is she hasn't been in the hospital. Oxygen levels are good. And it's really about managing that fever because that a fever, it's the inflammation stage, as you know. Um, and we're hoping this weekend we can get some relief. But that's a little bit of an update for you there, Steve, on what we're nice. going through. Yeah, yeah. And it, again, I want to, um, it may not have been clear on the title, even though we're here today to discuss um, about health things, absolutely everything that we'll talk about today is designed to have you be able to do more in life. It's not just about making more money in business. Um, it's about literally being more of you, right? Because what you'll learn during the discussion today is that um, our sick care system, um, our media system is designed to take, to take from you, to make you not feel whole. And so as we connect to our wholeness and our health, we literally infinitely become much more capable, right? So I want to make sure that that is, that is set as a container, right? So we'll, we'll just jump right into it. So, you know, the title, like, you know, I try to make it very internet marketing, right? So three simple things, right? To make you unstoppable and all that and awesome. And we'll get to that. And typically what I find is that when humans have a deep discussion, right? I get asked all the time, hey, Steve, um, what do you do to be blank, right? To be successful, to be healthy. And what they expect typically is for me to answer with, well, do this and this and this. However, I am not a big fan of that. And here's why. If I were to pull, in fact, we can do it right now. I want everyone to just type in, what does success mean to you? And you might find that as you read the chat, that that's going to be a different context, a different definition for each of us right? Slightly different and sometimes very different. And so before I get into the tactics of to be unstoppable and to be healthy, we want to have a, a contextual, yes, I love it, healthy, happy, and independent. Let's just type in the answers, right? Type in what, how do you define success? I think this would be already a very fruitful practice um, to see each other's unique definition, right? And so as you're doing that, I'm going to keep going and we can kind of go back and discuss some of the answers. And so first, I would like to talk about the context, right? What is health, right? What is health and health care? Because if we don't understand the context of where health care and health is coming from, then to implement the tactics would be like giving you directions to go through a maze without having an overview of the entire maze. We, we would be guessing, right? It wouldn't be relative to you. We wouldn't know where you are in the maze to be able to give you the exact directions, right? Does that make sense? So health and healthcare, right? And this is where my first one was like, how do you, how do you become the creator of the maze versus being the, the mice or the rat that's in the maze? And those of you that may not be in the field of healthcare and, and mindset and all that stuff, we're absolutely the mice. We're, we're not the maze creators. We are tricked into thinking we're able to make our own sovereign decisions, but that's a trick. That's an illusion. And I'll, I'll just tie it to healthcare real quick, and I'll give you a, a deeper understanding, right? So some of you may or may not know that if you live in the U.S., which I assume most of you do, um, the way medicine is practiced was completely curated by John D. Rockefeller in 1910. Because in 1910, he and Carnegie sent a person around, and the way they disclosed it to the public is they wanted to standardize medicine. They said there was too many different forms of healing, right? There was like homeopathic, there was electromagnetic, there was herbal, acupuncture, energy. We need to standardize everything. And so it's called the Flexner Report, F-L-E-X-N-O-R. And what ended up happening was when that report came out, they said, look, we need to get rid of all the other forms of medicine except, which is what medicine is now, which is to match a drug to a symptom. And the reason this is done this way is because in 1910, around that time, if you look into what were some of the drugs that were being invented, many of them were petroleum-based, oil-based. If you look into further deeper, John D. Rockefeller invested $100 million in 1910. Right? That's, that's a lot of money in today money and put his team members onto the boards of medical colleges to curate the curriculum. Right. So this is, I, I, I think like everyone who's using the healthcare system right now has a right to know 
where did the system come from, right? And I see some of the pictures of you that were brave enough to show the video. I can see your age. And I can say that in your lifetime, the test that you go to your doctor to kind of discern if you're healthy hasn't been revamped ever. It's they look at the same things. How is that possible? Right? How is it possible that the, the tool that's used to discern are you healthy or not really hasn't been updated in a very long time, multiple, multiple, multiple decades? This is the system that we operate in. And keep in mind that the system only profits when you're sick. It right? only profits when you're sick. It does not profit when you are healthy. Right. And so that is the context of, of our what I call the sick care system. And so what can we do about this? Well, we can essentially opt out of the system in a way. And what do I mean by that? I mean, our Western medicine is phenomenal. If you like get in a car accident, you get your leg cut off, any kind of traumatic injuries, Western medicine is phenomenal for. Not so good for chronic illness and general health. But those of you that are on this call, this discussion, if you're like, you know what? I want to be able to think clearly until the moment I die. I want to be able to live without chronic illness. I want to be able to make it through the day without you know, fatigue. I want to be able to sleep at night. I want to be able to uh, experience life without this constant anxiety and even depression. Western medicine is not the best for it. Right? If it was, we wouldn't see continued increases in many of those diseases. Right now in America, 45% of Americans have been labeled with a chronic illness, right? That's almost half, right? So again, that's the context. So how do we become the creator of the maze, I call it? Well, first we need to discuss the entire language, our entire reality has been hijacked. And what do I mean by that? Well, imagine this scenario. Imagine, how many of you have children? Just kind of raise your hand or just like, if you don't have your video on, just type in a, a little chat, right? Okay. so. Imagine your child comes home from school, right? And shows you the grade on a test and the grade just happens to be an F. What would you say? You would probably say, um, what happened? You know, did you sleep well that night? Um, you know, did you study? How did you study? Um, what was class like? What happened, right? In other words, we would default automatically to a discussion of the root cause of why he or she got an F. Now, here's what happens. Imagine you go to the doctor and you, you go there with high blood pressure, right? Is there a discussion of, hey, Bob, John, Jan, what happened? What's going on in life? Does that actually happen? Typically not. What typically happens is if we use the child example, you see the F, you go, oh, I get it. I know what you have. You have stupidity. We would just label a child with this, this label, you have stupidity. That's what it is, right? Just take this pill for stupidity. And imagine if we told the kid you have stupidity for a year, two years, what would happen? The kid would believe it. And so there's actual psychological study showing, yes, the school system I'm seeing, yeah, yeah our school system also is not favorable. That's a whole nother discussion. So the study showing that the language of healthcare, when I say you have diabetes, you have high blood pressure, you have blank, whatever that blank is, the studies show you're 30% more likely to have the symptoms because the language is imparting onto you that you have this thing. Imagine if the wording was different. Imagine the wording, instead of saying, let's say you have diabetes, we'd say you are currently experiencing the symptoms of the decreased ability to process blood sugar. That's very different than you have diabetes, right? Just think if you're all entrepreneurs here, imagine if you have a quarter, a year, that's your know, missed the mark, your KPIs and stuff. I just say, you have failure. That would be awful. You would never tell any of your team members, business partners, you have failure. But in medicine, everything is you have, you have, and you have. And so that's what I mean by our entire reality of health has been hijacked because the language was carefully curated to keep you sick and in the system. And so these are very important contextual understandings. And you can apply this to education. You can also apply this to marketing and business. 
right? And we can have a whole discussion on that later if there's moments on how our language is literally impacting on the human much deeper than we realize. I mean, all of you are marketers, so you more than the average human know the impact of our copy, right, of our words. And so they're, of course, influencing the minds of the humans, right? And so those are some, some general contextual understandings I like to put in place before we even get into the tactical, actionable stuff, right? So you kind of know where things are coming from. And just to give you a side note, the reason you can tell I'm a little, little passionate about this is not only have I been studying this stuff for 32 years, my first study was uh, programming the unconscious mind, right? Psycho-cybernetics when I was 14, mainly because I was a little suicidal back then, a little sad and depressed. But 14 years ago, my wife was diagnosed with an incurable disease. They said, you have ulcerative colitis, right? So those of you that don't know that just means her colon and her intestines were bleeding. She was actually hospitalized for almost a week and almost died, was basically being fed through an IV. And thank God I knew some smart people because in six weeks, because the medical system wanted to drug her for the rest of her life, in six weeks, she was cured cured, no relapse. We found the root, root, root cause of her symptoms, and we got rid of the root cause, which was actually a strain of bacteria called hemolytic E. coli. If you ever hear of sometimes like in California, someone ate a raw burger and they died, it's because of this strain of bacteria. And so we found that as the root cause. You've been on California? Typically. Just kidding. You know, I don't know. I, sometimes I hear news like they eat a raw in and out burger. And I think that was the last time I saw. So anyway, so that is the root cause. And so when my friend who helped her do this 14 years ago, that really woke me up and I was like, what the hell? How was he able to cure her in six weeks with ease when we literally were suffering in fear of her life in the traditional hospital system? We went to the best hospital. She works in the hospital system, right? She's a, a nurse anesthetist. So, so we went to the top doctors in Philadelphia, Penn. This wasn't like little small town hospital, their best advice was take these two drugs for the rest of your life. And that really embarked me, embarked on a journey on discovering what, what's wrong with the system and how can we actually work together to, to create a better system, right? And so again, that's a little contextual understanding of why I'm, I'm a little, little passionate about this. And so once we have that understanding, I'll give you some additional information. In the last two and a half years, right, Damien was part of the group. We've been able to test tons of entrepreneurs. And when we say test, we don't just mean your typical physician blood work, which literally shows nothing. Um, they look at about 20 to 25 markers when you go to get your, your typical yearly physical. We, we, meaning scientists, we can measure 10,000 different variables in a human now, 10,000. Right? Again, imagine you run a business and you want to analyze, let's say, someone's marketing campaign. Imagine looking at like the first word in their headline and go, I, I get your entire marketing campaign. That would be silly, right? You would want to look at a lot more data before you discern how effective that marketing campaign is. Well, a typical physician looks at 0.025% of the data to discern if you're healthy or not, 0.025. So we collect about 3,000. We collected about 3,000 data variables to assess. We don't need all 10. Thousand. Not everyone's dying from cancer. That's we would go much deeper. But for general, mostly healthy, a little bit of sickness, a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of brain fog, we test about three thousand variables. And what we found was that ninety-three percent of the people that we tested had some one of their six main regions of their brain was dysfunctional, and many people didn't come knowing that they had a dysfunctional part of their brain. Right. They came, they're like, I'm tired. I want more energy. I want to be optimized. I want to do more. Two people actually knew, okay, I, they had some brain fog out of the lots and lots of people that we tested. And so that was a, another wake up call to me. I started to see this rising trend of more and more essentially brain dysfunction. And again, I'm telling this because, uh, which would make sense when I give you some of the tactical things, some of the tactical things are designed to support your brain health essentially. Right, from a root cause level. I don't just mean take a few nootropics and, and biohack. That's, that's still suppressing symptoms. The things I'm going to advise that you do are actually going at the root cause. Everything, all the tactical things I'm going to give you are designed to get at the root cause. Because if you only do symptom suppressing stuff, you feel good that day, that week, that month, 
but it's like playing whack-a-mole. You just constantly got to keep doing that stuff. You got to keep whacking. And that arm gets really tired at some point. The things I'm going to give you is like getting the, the power switch or unplugging the machine. You don't keep, you don't need to keep doing this stuff once you incorporate it into you. Okay. And so again, just want to give you contextual understanding that brain health, I believe, especially with COVID, which we know causes no inflammation, especially with the quarantine and the lack of human touch causing brain inflammation. I'll give you an interesting study. Um, they put mice, they quarantine mice. They basically put mice by themselves within just a few weeks, their brains shrank. This is huge. Um, animals and humans, living beings, needs to be gathered with other humans. We, we need human touch, human touch. When you touch another human skin to skin, after about eight seconds, you start to release this incredible um, hormone called oxytocin. It's also known as the hormone of trust, right? Oxytocin is profound for brain healing. Oxytocin also helps you lose weight. Oxytocin helps increase healing. Oxytocin is, you know, they talk about babies who aren't, aren't held, don't thrive. It's because it's not releasing oxytocin. Oxytocin is profound. So if you have someone in your living space that you can physically touch, you know, appropriately, if you can physically touch, I would highly, highly recommend getting at least minimum would be eight seconds of skin to skin touch. This is profound. Some of the most simplest, we're, we, you're built in healers, right? So a true healer is to reveal the healer within the other human. That is my intention with this talk. You, you don't need external things to heal. We are walking healers of ourselves, right? And so I'm going to give you actions that allows you to heal yourself because again, and you all know this as marketers, you know, part of the way we sell things is we have to create a separation, right? We basically have to say, your current thing is not good enough. That's why you need my thing. This is fortunately and unfortunately marketing. I'm here to tell you that, yes, that's an element of what you do and how we live. We must create separation. Some people sometimes get them to act. However, I, there's opposite, there's polarity, there's opposites, everything. So we also get to own wholeness, that we are completely whole and everything that you have experienced up until this moment was meant to be, All right? This is very important. I wanna make sure that I put that into the talking circle because I recognize I am creating a little bit of separation with this talk, but I want to harmonize that with some wholeness, if that makes sense, okay? And so next we'll move on to, right? Just the, the three simple things right away. I'll talk about those things because I wanna make sure I get a sense that at the end, and feel free to interrupt me if there's questions, just unmute and just like chime in. Um, but my gut feeling is there's gonna be lots of questions and discussions. And so I'm gonna save plenty of time for that, right? So I'm just gonna jump right into the three simple things. One of the most profound things that you can do if you live in America is avoid eating grains. This is going to be profound. Now I'll explain to you why I'm making this recommendation. If you look into it, in the EU, 72 pesticides that are used in America are completely banned because they go, this is way too toxic. Like we can't use this stuff. All 72 pesticides are completely allowed in America. Many of these pesticides are sprayed on our crops. And to give an idea of how much extra pesticides and chemicals are in our food that's not in the EU, in 2015, they measured this. In 2015, 322 million extra tons of pesticides were sprayed on our food that were not sprayed onto the food of the Europeans. Just keep in mind, a ton is a thousand pounds. The other way I said it is 322 billion pounds of extra chemicals were sprayed on our food. Right, so there's about 300 million Americans. That's a billion pounds of pesticide per American in that one year just to wrap your brains around how much. That's one us. thing I'm, I'm going to interject for a minute. That's yep. one thing we are really thankful for living here in Mexico. Mm -hmm. We have no pesticides on any of our vegetables and fruits. It's all organic and you don't even pay a premium for it. Yeah. It's just in every single market. Um, all of the chickens are regular size. None of them are pumped up with steroids and it just all – Everything is organic, and that, that is it's a it's a it's a total culture thing, right? Where yeah. the U.S. is for capitalism, doing it in a certain way, and Mexico does it for 
the, the better well-being of life, in, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love it when I go to Mexico because the food just tastes so much cleaner. Even if you buy organic here, it's still cleaner in other countries. And that's a, I won't really get into that. And so now I'll circle back to why grains. Actually, before grains, I'll, I'll tell you um, as an extra on the pesticide. Because sometimes people don't realize how powerful these pesticides are on our physiology. So just one of the pesticides, the study showed that one drop of this pesticide in a billion drops of water. So if you just put a drop of this pesticide in a lake, basically, it turned the male frogs into female frogs. That's how estrogenic this pesticide is. It literally gave the frogs a sex change at one part per million. At that dilution, it had that effect. And we're spraying millions of tons of this stuff onto our food, right? So keep that in mind. So why grains? Well, mainly because of glyphosate, right? Roundup. The herbicide, which obviously they spray on wheat, they also use it as a drying agent. Um, national studies, meaning um, a study where they sampled random Americans right, throughout the U.S., and they looked at um, their blood. They found 93% of Americans have Roundup in our blood. Right? Everyone we've ever tested has Roundup. We've never tested anyone that didn't have Roundup. And so what, what, what does Roundup do? Well, um, besides causing lymphoma, which they've lost class action lawsuits on that, um, Interestingly, Bayer that just bought Monsanto just got Roundup approved as an antibiotic because it kills bacteria in our gut. The drawback is it also kills healthy bacteria in our gut. And the reason I'm recommending this because of our brain health is because our gut health, our stomach and intestinal health is more important for our brain health than our brain in a way. The other way I said it is um, our stomach releases more serotonin, as an example, more um, happy brain chemicals than our brain. And our direct nerve connections is called the vagus nerve. You want to know the fancy name. There's a direct nerve that goes from our stomach and sends signals into our brain and tells our brain what to do, right? So in fancy medical terms, they would call this a gut-brain axis, right? It's, it's completely connected. And so when we eat grains in America, and they've tested it. even if it says organic because of cross cross contamination it has roundup in it in other words they don't walk around and spray the roundup right they fly an airplane over and dump it onto the the crops so if there's an organic farm next to a regular farm um, there's a thing called uh, wind and wind carries basically the roundup and contaminates the organic farm right and so i used to give my kids up my if you hear like the ice maker happening and some cabinets is my daughter getting i think she's making tea so Yes, I'm talking to you, Emma. So Emma's making tea. And I used to give Emma and her sister Lily these, you know, these Auntie Annie, the Annie's bunny crackers, right? Because they're organic. Yeah, tons of Roundup when they tested it. Great example, right? And so the number one thing you can do to improve your brain and physical health in America is to really, 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 really try to avoid round or grains, which is like avoiding Roundup basically. Yes. Yeah. And so now you might be thinking, well, what about oatmeal? What about some of the other grains? Why did I say grains? Why didn't I just say wheat? It's because typically the farms that are growing the oats and the stuff is nearby the wheat farms as well. Again, when they've tested oatmeal, like it's got Roundup in it again because of cross contamination. And so some people go, I love, I got to have some pasta. I got to have some, some grains in my life. I will say import it. Right? You can buy pasta that's imported from Italy. Right? And so if you get it imported from other countries, it basically is significantly more healthy and more safe, which is why you hear a lot of people, they'll say, oh, I'm gluten sensitive or I'm carb sensitive. But when they go to like vacation in Europe, they go, oh my God, I felt so much better. I ate pasta like every day because it wasn't the carbohydrates and it wasn't the gluten. It was the lack of Roundup over there and the tons and tons of Roundup over here. Right. So I, I tell people like when we tested blood, I would say 15% of the people that we've tested actually have a gluten sensitivity. 100% of humans have Roundup sensitivity. No one's, no one's have yet to meet a person that's impervious or immune to Roundup. Right. It is very, very harsh on our system. So if you can try to import from other countries or you, you can get quinoa, right? It's like a super grain from Peru. If you want to eat wheat, I would get it from overseas. If you're eating rice, unfortunately, rice in America has arsenic. 
I know our, our lands are kind of rough right now. So I would import high grain or high quality rice from like Japan uh, and other countries. That would be the, the most ideal, right? So tip number one, simple action is essentially avoid grains um, grown in America, right? To, to be more distinct, okay? And the second one is, here's an interesting one. Um, and I'll, I'll give you context before I say what I'm about to say. We all know oil is about to be worthless, right? Because this, the, the cost that we can extract energy from solar is now lower than oil. And all the oil people know this, right? So many of them, guess what they're buying? They're buying water. Water is going to be the oil of the future. There's literally, if you look into this, this is a bit scary, um, five investment funds right now owns more than 30% of the rights of water in the world. They control 30, more than 30% of the water in the world. Wow. And so, oh yeah, <clears throat> this is going to be huge in the future. There'll be wars fought over water. We, we Absolutely. We are living in Cabo San Lucas, Mexico, and <clears throat> that's the one thing for the future that is a big concern with this market right here is water. We're in the desert down here. On the peninsula and water's a, water's an issue because all of the tur all of the hotel properties that are just going up and going up and going up and going up they're using all the water it's yeah yeah water is going to be the oil of the future basically and so why am i saying this and how does it apply to health well again i'm assuming most people live in america um our water is to say it's contaminated is an understatement um, I'll give you some data you may not know. So, um, you know, the, the chemical that makes pans like nonstick, like Teflon and stuff. So I'll give you a little history. So 3M and DuPont both made those chemicals. Um, 3M stopped making it because their entire team of scientists that worked on it died of cancer. We, we now know it's extremely cancerous. DuPont's like, screw you all. We're still making it. What's interesting about it is because it's also Scotchgard, it's, it's, it's in a lot of things. Um, when again, they sampled water supply from around the country, um, a hundred million people. So one third of a water supply basically is contaminated with this chemical. And, um, for those of you that are listening, I will, uh, type in, let me grab the link. Um, actually, no, I don't know if I, if I can minimize. So if you just search, um, EWG in water, if you, you know, Google search EWG in water you will see a link. I highly recommend everyone do this if you live in America because you get to type in your zip code and it's going to show you who are the water suppliers that you're getting your water from. And if you click on your water supplier, they've tested water in our entire country and you will see what are the exact chemicals and how much of the chemicals are in your water. And this will be, for some people, very shocking. I can what tell you that- in the chat yep. here? Yeah, EWG and water. If you type in those two words in Google, you'll see it'll be, of course, the first Derek result. Derek, Derek got it. Thanks, Derek. Perfect. Yep. And I can tell you that in I live in Voorhees, New Jersey, uh, just south of me in Berlin at a, a patient that just asked me and I looked it up for her. She has 108 times more arsenic in her tap water than what's considered safe. Right. Not 10 times more. That would already be awful. It's arsenic. Arsenic's kind of rough on our system, 108 times more arsenic than what's been deemed a safe level, right? So in Voorhees, where I live, we have about 120 times more of this one chemical that's a known carcinogen. There's 32 chemicals in the water and roughly 15 exceed safe limits, right? So I would highly, highly recommend that all of you um, use that database and type in, you know, your zip code and find out your municipal water supplier and click, because this way you have full understanding of the water crisis that we're living in. And so some of you might be thinking, it's okay, I drink bottled water. Well, um, bottled water consistently when tested has been shown to be more unhealthy than tap water, right? Because at least our tap water is semi-regulated, even though as you can see from the data, it's not, they're not doing a good job. The bottle, the bottled water companies are not regulated at all. There's no regulation. And also, even if they put the purest actual mountain spring water in, 
the um, chemical that they use to form the plastic, right? Most people at this point know it's called BPA. It's been shown that the BPA chemical leaches into the water and we drink it. Now, interesting, they've known this. Scientists have known this, right? There were two original studies that showed that such small amounts that get in, it's fine. Of course, those two studies were funded by the people who make the water, right? The water bottles. Independent studies show it's typically seven to 11, 700% to 1,100% higher than what they initially reported. And so BPA used to be a drug that used its estrogen. It's yet another estrogen, right? And so not to get too conspiracy theory, but there's many things in our food and water that is estrogen based, right? Hey, Steve, look who yeah. just popped on here. Your buddy Preston's on here. Hey, <laughs> also Preston, Preston, Preston could do this. I could just like go take a nap and talk. So somebody somebody shamed me into joining the call. So <laughs> that's awesome. I'm, I'm doing something in the background. I apologize, but I am definitely listening to your wisdom, my friend. Yep. Honored that you're here. Yeah. And so one of the things that people tend tend to pay attention to is their drinking water, right? They'll they'll get water filters, they'll get bottled water. If you are using bottled water, I highly recommend um, stopping. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. Uh, you're better off. The number one uh, option to do is to get a central line filter. If you own your own home, by far from a cost perspective, from a uh, the cleanest water possible perspective, you get a central line filter. This just means it's a, a, a water filter that's going to be almost the size of like a hot water heater that big. And it's connected to your central line, which is the main line of, you know, the municipal water entering your house. And what that means is every drop of water downstream is filtered, right? Because if you think about it, if you only filter, let's say you're drinking water from your sink or something, you're still bathing and showering in the toxic water, right? When you take that hot shower and you know all that hot water goes in your skin, your skin is the largest organ, it can absorb chemicals, right? And also the steam, right? The steam has all the chemicals from the water that you inhale. Inhaling, it's why people snort drugs and inject drugs, right? Because at least if we eat the drug, our liver has a chance to filter it, right? It's called the first pass effect. If we store and inject a drug, it bypasses that. It goes into our system even better. And so the chemicals in the water that we are aware of from our drinking, it's actually more harmful when it gets into us from inhaling and through our skin, right? So it's very important to, if you own your own home, to get a central line filter. And I can uh, grab a resource for that if there's time. Um, if you don't own your own home, that's not a possibility. Then the best option would be to get a under the sink uh, reverse osmosis filtration system and then get a shower head filter. Now, granted, the shower head filter is not the best filter. It's just a tiny carbon filter. It's not going to filter everything, but it's better than nothing. That's going to be your second best choice if you do not, if you rent essentially. Okay, so I would highly recommend doing this because we are defaulted to think that success in big things comes from big actions. From studying humans for a long time, I find that in my life, success comes from what I call daily devotion. It's the consistency of the little things that leads to the success, not the big thing, right? It's the consistency in the little things. This is why putting in a central line filter is a consistent simple thing. It's a, it's, it's a, I love what I call set it and forget it systems, right? Cause you install it, you're done. And you know that every drop of water into your home is now clean. It's not something you need to think about. And just, so you know, the, the cost for like, I have one, you know, in my house here, it was $1,800 for the unit. It costs, I think like 200 bucks for the plumber to put in. However, it filters the filter, which is replaceable for like 400 filters, like 2 million gallons. If you do the math, this is way cheaper than bottled water. It's it's by far the cheapest way. It's it's a little bit more upfront, but from a um, cost per gallon perspective, it's it's infinitely cheaper than any other way, right? So again, I highly encourage you, if you own your own home to get a central line filter, All right? So those two are some simple things, right? Hey, import some wheat from Italy, some quinoa from Peru, install a water filtration system. These are some of the simple things that are getting at the root cause which is toxins into your system, the root cause of like brains melting and poor health and illness and disease. The next one, I'm gonna spend a little bit more, more time on more moments because the next one is um, a little bit deeper, right? This has to do with mind. 
And to give an idea why I'm gonna spend a little bit more moments on this one, first, again, I'm gonna give you context. So again, from studying how humans operate in health and all that stuff, and from literally, you know, I have a doctorate degree in all the Western medicine and all that stuff, but I've also sought out ancient texts, right? Written by shamans and, and ancient wisdom. And so what I'm about to tell you is from the experience of understanding both things, which is what dictates us, our ability to thrive and function. And I'll give you the analogy of the Russian doll. You know, have you seen those Russian dolls? That's like the big doll within the little doll of the little doll, right? The outermost doll that contains all the dolls, we'll call it spirit, we'll call it God, we'll call it divine, that. One doll in is frequency. Frequency can also be said in terms of thoughts and emotions, because that's what dictates our frequency. Biology is actually the smallest doll inside. This is fascinating, right? Western medicine focuses on biology. Biology is the least impactful for our health. And so the thing I want to talk about is energy, right? And, and again, I could do probably like a six hour discussion on this, but I try to simplify it. If what's a universal thing I can give all of you, a universal practice without customize, customizing it to each individual person's values and, and beliefs and identity. If I had to give one thing, that would be letting go and transmuting the current practice of judgment and switching it to discernment. And so you might be questioning, well, what's the difference between judgment and discernment? Judgment, essentially, you'll hear words like right, wrong, positive, negative, good, bad. Those are judgment words. Discernment is picking out the quality of the thing and figuring out if that's useful for us or not. Right, there's a big difference. And here's why this is so important. Uh, some of you, and I don't have time to probably go into all seven hermetic laws. If, if you're listening and you have never heard of the hermetic laws, the seven hermetic laws, with the highest recommendation, I recommend looking into the seven hermetic laws. They're called the immutable laws because these are the seven rules that govern nature that governs the universe, that governs reality. Kind of important for humans to know, but not taught to humans because you would then overthrow the powers. If every human in society knew the seven hermetic laws, we would okay. hop, yep. We've got, I've got to put it in the chat because it sounds uber important. So what is. Is, what is this now? The seven hermetic laws. Yeah, so I'll, I'll list them real quick, and then I will apply it to why I'm talking. Hermetic, H-E-R-M-E-T-I-C. Uh, yep, exactly. Hermetic oh, laws. Perfect. Preston's got my back. Thank you, Preston. Preston does. We talk about this, Preston. So um, the seven laws are um, everything's in vibration, right? All molecules, we all know, right? Science, every, every molecule is vibration. Um, every, the origin of all things is thought. Our mind creates everything. Uh, everything has a masculine and feminine aspect to it, not just male, female, but a masculine and feminine uh, energy to it. Um, the law of polarity, right? There's everything is opposites, day and night, hot and cold. The law of rhythm, right? Everything in the universe is in rhythm. Nothing in the universe is linear. There's a law of cause and effect. Nothing just happens by chance. There's, you know, cause and effect. Um, and the favorite one is the law of correspondence, also known as as above, so below, as within, so without. What that means is our internal state controls reality just as much as reality controls our internal state. It's a two-way street, okay? Highly recommend all of you to do a little bit of, you could just read a blog post at least. I mean, there's a book on this, but there's some good blog posts that summarizes these concepts. I've been able to use these seven immutable laws over the years to create and craft a life that, um, and I won't get into all the details, it's, it's pretty magical, okay? Literally, I feel like having these sort of seven hermetic laws is the, are the tools 
people talk about manifesting. If you want to get into like woo spiritual language, manifesting, manifesting just means you get what you desire. These seven hermetic laws are the fundamental tools for you to get what you desire. Okay. There's some other elements. Maybe later on, if we have time, we can talk about that. So why did I say all that and why judgment in this sermon? Well, here's why. I'm sure many of you have read this. Be positive, right? It's all over the internet, all over the world. People are like, I want to be positive. Positive, if positive was heads on a coin, what's the flip side, the tail side? It's negative. When you pick up the word positive, that coin, you cannot pick up just heads. It has to have tails. So what that means is whenever we say to ourselves, I want to be positive or that's positive, there must be a negativity in its existence currently for you to desire the positivity, if that makes sense. right? This is a law of rhythm and a law of polarity. The other way to say that is I don't walk around saying I want to be Asian because I'm already Asian. So when you walk around and say I want to be positive, the presupposition, if I want to get into marketing NLP language, the presupposition is you're currently negative. So you're telling your system that you're currently negative when you say, I want to be positive. Just like if you're telling your system that I want to be a good problem solver, you must attract and create more problems to solve. Right, so and I'll get into that later on about creating our reality. Right, so how what does this how does this apply to judgment? Well, when we judge things as good, bad, right, wrong, positive, negative, in our internal system, you cannot avoid the flip side to that. So whatever you're judging as good, there has to be some bad with it. Whatever you're judging as positive, there's got to be a negative to it. Wherever you're judging things as right, there's going to be a wrong with it. You cannot bypass that duality. Right in our normal human existence. There, there's ways to transcend it with meditation. But in our human business doings and logic and thinking, we cannot bypass this duality. And so what we don't realize is that our energy system, our subconscious mind, right, that those words might resonate more with you guys, which is you're basically programming your subconscious mind, the flip side of every one of those statements and every one of those intentions whenever you hold that intention or say those words. And so what ends up happening is our nervous system, right, if we just want to science this, our subconscious mind absolutely controls our, our physical being, right? Remember that energy, the mind thought doll, right? And I'll give you an example of how powerful this is. Recently, there was a study that just came out. They gave three groups of people the same food. They ate exactly the same thing, but they put it in three different boxes. Each box had the nutrition label that was different. One said low sugar, one said you know medium amount of sugar, one said high sugar, but they ate exactly the same food. And after they ate the food, the researchers tested their blood and they found that their insulin response, their blood sugar response was dictated not by the food, but by the label on the food. This is huge, right? What that means is what our mind believes trumps the biology. This is an example of that, that outer doll trumps the inner doll of biology. Because just by thinking that thing had 30 grams of sugar versus zero versus 60, it's the same exact food, our blood sugar and our internal physiology changed based on our mind. And so when we start to judge things, right, mm, that's good, that's bad, I, I'd be more positive, oh, right or wrong, we cannot escape that duality, that polarity, that opposite, and it puts our nervous system and our overall state into one of dis-ease, right? If we want to be able to thrive, if we want to think clearly, we want to be able to make clear and quick decisions that are amazing for our business and our life, I would think you would want a mind that is in a state of ease, right? So you, you have quietness and stillness and you have all of you to think and feel through that decision to make a clear decision. But in a state of dis-ease, there's all this noise, there's all this anxiety and feelings and vibrations and emotions and thoughts that don't belong there, that is a state of dis-ease. And so what we're really talking about right, for the last almost hour is getting you into the state of ease. 
this is what I started to talk about in the beginning. This isn't just a health talk. To me, that would be extremely boring. I would just be like, go watch I have a thousand videos out there. This is more about getting into the state of ease so we create the life that we want. Okay. And so switching from judgment to discernment, right? Someone chops off your arm instead of saying, oh, that's negative, or no, I'm going to pretend that's positive. It's, you might as well go with, how is this useful for me? Discern and extract the value, right? This discern, distract the lesson, the value, the, the, the something of use, basically. That is discernment. And as we do this, and using the set yep. of lenses you look through, right? It's like yep. the conversation I've had with you, Judy, about when they let you go. It wasn't the worst day of your life. It was the best day of the rest of your life. Yes, absolutely. It is. Our, our lens in which we see the world, which is the law of correspondence, right? In other words, if we're like an angry, hateful person, we see, oh, my God, everything's happening to me. That's awful you will have a life of that. If you're an internal person of, I see the value in all things and the gift in all things, guess what happens? You will have a magical life filled with value and gift. Right, so we just, it's a law of correspondence. We change our internal state in order to shift the external world. It's just that, I'm sure you all know, marketing tends to sell the opposite, right? You're not happy until you, you're not sexy until you have the Porsche. You're not safe unless you have the Volvo, so on and so forth, right? Unfortunately, marketing spins it the other way. But as friends now, on this discussion, we all know it is equally as powerful internal to external versus always external, okay? And so the last thing is, you know, one tool to give you the pen, I call it, to write the story that you desire in business and life. And I could talk about a lot of tools there. There's a lot of tools, but one of my favorite tools is also the most simple tool, which I've alluded to a lot and peppered it throughout this discussion, which is the use of language, right? Our words, or just think when we spell words, we, we're technically piecing the alphabet together to form a word. That's what it actually is. But if you notice, we spell because every word that we think in every word absolutely that we encant, we speak, we're absolutely spellcasting, right? And so, and I kind of alluded to this one, a lot of people, you know, I used to do this. I used to be like, I used to pride myself of being a very, very, you know, exceptional problem solver. And guess what happened? My life was always filled with bouts of problems because I had to attract problems in order to fulfill my identity. Our brains, unfortunately, are not programmed as a, on default for like riches and happiness and all that stuff. It's default for survival, right? Ultimately, default for survival. One of the main things that we kind of need for survival is sanity. If we're insane, if we can't sense make, uh, we're, we're pretty useless. And so, and I'm sure many of you know, they're called the cognitive biases, right? That's a psychological way of describing how our minds tricks ourselves into our own reality. And so when we identify ourselves as a problem solver, of course, we must actually create problems in order to solve, or else we would feel like that doesn't match my values and who I am anymore. There would be a, a big mismatch. And so how, what does this mean? Well, choose your self-identity very carefully, right? So I've switched recognizing this a few years ago. I really embody being a harmony maximizer. Just think, what does a harmony maximizer have to do to maximize harmony? I must attract harmony in order to maximize. So feel free to swipe that. That's like a swipe file. But I encourage all of you to take some moments, right, and write down how do you define yourself, your identity? And then when you look at those words, now that you understand a little bit about the hermetic laws and the law of correspondence and the law of rhythm, you can apply that to some of these labels, some of these self-identity. And then you get to craft your own, the headline of you, right? The identity of you in a way that is the most serving of your life right now. Do you have something to say, Damien? No, very good stuff. No, okay. I was... I'm muting just for that. Got it. 
got it. Yeah. And so words, right? Words are extremely powerful. Like I hear a lot of common words, let's say in business, um, hit. Let's hit the milestone. That thing hit, hit me. Why don't we say um, we achieve the milestone with grace? That's a very different reality than hit the milestone or hit the goal, right? Hit is a very abrupt energy. And so we have a lot of opportunities to go pretty deep into our natural language use. And once you peel the, the fog away and you see your own words through this clarity, I guarantee you this light bulb will go off and go, oh my God, no wonder I'm currently experiencing this in my life because you've been casting those unconscious and subconscious spells constantly. This is what I mean by being very aware of your words is literally like getting the pen that allows you to write the story. Because what you realize is that we were tricked into thinking we've had the pen all along, but many of these words were programmed into us without us you know, knowing it. Just think when you were in school in English class, there wasn't like, okay, let's piece the words of your reality. That was not English. English was just how do you properly piece together words in a grammatically correct way? I remind people the divine God spirit doesn't care about grammar, right? Like if you speak grammatically incorrect, if you're religious, if God was in front of you, I guarantee you God's not going to be like, you got a B plus today. You suck. That's not going to be a thing, right? However, what's more important than grammar is the exact words that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis as we speak and as we think, right? And so I will tell you, I'll circle back and close the loop. My, Steve, my definition of success is living day-to-day -day without ever any self-judgment, without any self-talk that is not serving of the self. That is my definition of success. Because if that is happening, does it matter what's happening externally, right? Because no matter what's happening externally, if the language internally without force, just naturally is loving language to the self, it means you must be in that state of self-acceptance, self-love and peace and ease, no matter what's happening externally. You have that, Sonia? <laughs> I, can, I can repeat that if, if needed, okay? So please repeat. Yes, so okay. my definition of success is living day to day, moment to moment, where my internal thoughts is all about self-acceptance, appreciation. There's no judgment of the self at all. There's no, damn it, I shouldn't have not done that. Or, oh, that was stupid. Or, oh, I can't believe like those types of words. Because your internal language of how you reflect upon and treat yourself is everything. Just think, all of you, if you're defining success as you know, external, if I were to ask you, why do you want that? About five layers. What you'll realize is that the fifth, sixth, seventh layer is really just about internal feelings anyway. Right? I want the million or billion or whatever, or the awesome house external thing, or impacting a million people, the legacy. At the end of the day, the real reason is I want to feel loved. Right? I want to feel important. I want to feel safe. Ultimately, those external things that we are striving for is for a internal, what's called a core state anyway. Okay, and so my definition of success is the internal language is constantly supporting this internal core state naturally. Naturally is the key. Now, in the beginning, you can, you can, it's, you know, fake it until you make it. You can actually force it. You can just, you know, do mantras and, and, and um, curate your subconscious to do this. But the end goal is to have it just be natural no matter what. Right, right. And so um, now we'll open up for some discussions. We got like 30 minutes. I figured that'd be plenty of time. I will say that, um, and there's no, I don't sell anything on this, right? It's free. I have a course on my website that I call it the Wisdom Words course. And it's a course that gives you the awareness of your current language. That's phase one. Phase two is you adjust, like how do you actually adjust your language? There's actually a way I didn't get into this talk of how to discern what words vibrationally, subconsciously, you know, matches you right now. That's the adjustment uh, section phase. And adoption is how do you integrate? How do you become 
a person who speaks and uses and thinks with wisdom words, right? Because ultimately, if we become that person, that's also like pulling the plug. We don't have to constantly be doing the stuff. We are now, we're now, we're that person naturally. So for all of you, and we can apply this to business, marketing, life, many of us are striving for the actual, the destination. What if we become the person where that destination comes naturally, right? What It's like, you can either wish for the thing or wish for unlimited wishes. We, we all want unlimited wishes. Becoming the person that gets the thing naturally is like unlimited wishes versus wishing for the thing. It's a very important concept. That's it. Mind <laughs> blowing stuff here. You know, and, and, and you, you hit it by saying <clears throat> the marketing words of like the three things. It just sounds like you're going to come learn three tips. Three things were so deep and powerful. And the last one, so poignant. I mean, this is uh, no, no, no wonder if, if, if one can lean into all three, it truly would change their life. In fact, even uh, Christine on here agrees. Christine says, wow, holy moly, this is truly life-changing. Thank you. You're welcome. Really, really good stuff. Good to see yeah. you, Martin. Yeah. You finally show up, Martin. <laughs> Yeah, so I welcome any questions, um, any discussions, anything that you want further um, clarity on, or if you have a personal question, as long as everyone's okay with any kind of personal questions, I am, you have me for the next uh, 30 minutes, so. All right, open up, first question, let's go on Audible, let's hit some questions on Audible, and if you don't want to do Audible, it's okay to put yeah. the questions in the chat, but uh, let's hit a couple on Audible. Yeah, so I see one from Christine that says, how did you come upon this path? <laughs> well, um, well, we'll in the beginning, but yeah, reiterate. Yeah. Yeah. And so in general, I call it following the magical breadcrumbs. That's like the theme. Definitely has been a very sequential things of magical things that kind of changed my life from a trajectory standpoint. But the thing that sparked it was um so i was you know born in taiwan um and i came to the u.s when i was eight years old in 1983 and i had a, a five-year-old five a brother that's five years older we used to we used to fight a lot he actually like threw me through a wall once because I, I don't give up and so um really from that upbringing and we were like dirt poor we literally like picked from the trash for our furniture the we lived in a trailer park when we moved to America with just a bed. There was like no other room. It was just a bed. We had to like go to use someone else's bathroom, but there was no kitchen. Uh, and from that, and plus, you know, my mom worked all the time. We were pretty unsupervised through a series of events. At some point, I felt extremely, extremely lonely. And around 14, um, this light bulb went off. I was like, there's no difference between Bill Gates when he was cool back then. Uh, might be so cool for some of you. There's no difference between Bill Gates and Martin Luther King, right? It wasn't like they had a second head or a third arm or a rocket ship. Um, they just thought differently. That came into my brain. I was like, oh, why don't I just go and learn how to think? And so I embarked on this journey when I was 14. Uh, the first book was Psycho Cybernetics. And since then, and took up meditation and embarked on this consciousness <laughs> exploration. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, when I was 14. And so, and since then read, and just happened to meet someone that introduced me to the Bhagavad Gita when I was 16 and started reading that, that really embarked on spiritual deeper awareness. Yeah, just, just through a series of very magical guidance somehow. Yeah. I'm glad oh. you asked that question, Christine. Uh, what is the website? My website is super easy. It's just my name, drsteveyoung.com. Let's see. Yes, we've been lied to so long by the media. It's hard to distinguish whom to believe. Yes, you know, I, I would love to talk about this a little bit. Um, I'm sure many of you know, we now have the technology to take a 10 second clip from everyone, anyone. And we have the technology to fake that video. Like we could make that person say anything. So we're basically living in an age where um, it's very, it's harder and harder to discern um, truth. Right, with all the media outlets and all this stuff, it's harder and harder to discern truth. This is where I believe um, the greatest gift 
one human can give to another human is trust at this point, right? Because the discernment of falsehood is becoming harder and harder. And so if it's a trust thing, then we want to look at what's been the moral and ethical operations of the companies that we're interacting with, just like we would want to know the morals of the human we interact with. This is why, you know, I'm currently having a problem taking a vaccine from Pfizer, not to get into that rabbit hole, but because Pfizer in the last decade has been fined $4.5 billion because they were found guilty of falsifying studies, faking studies to try to justify a drug that they sold that killed more than 55,000 people. That drug is called Vioxx, right? It's an arthritis drug that used to be sold along with Celebrex. They pulled it because it causes heart damage. And after a study that came out that said it causes heart damage, they falsified studies to show, no, it didn't, right? This is the company we're trusting. And so, yes, I believe it is very hard to discern truth out there. So we go by trust. So I highly encourage all of you to look into the morals and ethics of the people and the companies that we are interacting with because trust in our reputation is going to be the currency of the future. Let's see, any other questions? Let me scroll up, see if I missed one. Oh, oh, uh, oh. You have a question? I saw you wave your hand yeah, there. Yeah, I, I do. Uh, Dr. Young, uh, yeah. can you take us through the process when one is facing, let's say, a, a chaotic situation or a stressful situation, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's an anxiety or you just, you know, uh, I guess came across a conversation with somebody that really, you know, uh, create a lot of anger in you. How do you go into the adjustment and adoption process that you talked about? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So the first thing you do is you drink heavily. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> just want to see who could take that seriously. So, yeah. So there's a there's actually a great um, talk. I, I'm sure I'll have time to find a link and I'll post it in the chat. There's a uh, a great teacher who actually answers your question in a in a 90 minute talk, which probably will do it much more justice. But I'll summarize. His name is Guy Finley. So Guy talks about whenever we we experience friction in our lives. Right. And so under the umbrella of friction could be chaos, could be anxiety, could be whatever, right? Any friction, any resistance. The false teacher, he calls it, the first desire is, to, ooh, I don't want to feel that, right? If it's chaos leading to stress, I, I, how do I let go of the stress? How do I not feel stress? If it's pain, how do I let go of the pain, right? If it's worrying, how do I not worry, right? Because that's, keep in mind, that's the duality. To, to want to not worry is also to worry. To want to not have anxiety is to have anxiety. It's the same. It's the opposite, mm. right? And so first step is to recognize that you're still on the same swing, right? You're like, oh, I feel anxiety. I don't want anxiety. You're still on anxiety. It's like, it's like, don't think of the pink elephant, right? And so first you love that about yourself. There's nothing wrong with that. That is natural. This is a natural part of our human existence. Know that the first instinct is to try to suppress the symptom. And you love that about yourself. Right? So if you go, oh, I shouldn't be doing that, you've created another separation within yourself. So for step one is recognize the false teacher, which wants to reduce the symptoms, and you love it. Then once you love it away and you have some space, you ask yourself this question, which is, what is the story or identity in me that is perceiving it this way? Which goes back to, I mentioned if, I identify myself as a problem solver, problems will come up, right? It's not because I'm unlucky or my employees are idiots or the vendor sucks. It's because I said I'm a problem solver. Of course, I'm going to, through a series of things, create problems to solve. So ultimately, the thing that you're experiencing, it could be someone just coming up to you and telling this awful story. It's like, wait, of all the people, why, why me? It's because there's a self-identity in a story in you that essentially is creating that situation. And so it's a little bit of self-exploration of what is the story and the identity in myself that essentially is manifesting or creating this situation because um, it will keep repeating until, until that thing surfaces. So that's, that's the process.
but just he does a much deeper dive into it, just kind of you know summarizing. What was his name? Uh, Guy Finley. Oh, Finley. F I N L E Y. Um, I will. I can continue to answer questions and chat, and I'm going to grab that link for it. Thank you. Yeah, of course. David, you, you're, uh, I, I already know Steve's answer on this. Um, I'm going to let him hit it because <laughs> it's he, it's uh, look at David Arnold's question. Go ahead. Uh, ask it on Audible, David. Yeah, uh, Dr. Young, I was just actually uh, wanting your opinion on fasting. You hear a lot now about uh, intermittent fasting, of course, long-term fasting. Dave, why, you, I, why I reacted? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Got it. So. Um, yeah, so remember earlier I had mentioned that, um, I may not mention on this call. So I'll give you some premise. So, um, the destination, right? In this case, the destination is fasting in general contextual. I believe our relationship to the path of getting to the destination is the secret sauce, not the destination. So. I'll put that container in place and I'll answer your question. So essentially, if you think about it, um, fasting, yes, it has all kinds of biological benefits. However, I can also help you achieve the same exact physiological benefits without fasting, right? So as much as I can biohack, um, I'll talk about the contextual strategy first. But what is intermittent fasting? Well, it's a structured eating program, right? You only eat between this time and this time. In other words, it's a practice of adding more structure and containers into your life. This and this only and eat in this time only. So what I would highly recommend is reflect upon your life and say, right now in my life, is more structure beneficial or not? Right? Am I living in a life where I've learned to go with the flow? I just I don't set schedules, but my life sucks. If that's the case, I would highly recommend intermittent fasting because you're now practicing putting structure into your life practice. However, if you're like, I schedule my vacation minute to minute, which means you're very structured, and you're like, whew, I am stressed, then maybe intermittent fasting is not the way to go or fasting, right? Because you're just feeding the excessive attachment to structure by yet doing another structure thing. I was just on a call with someone about some of these concepts, right? And we talked about how many of the top biohackers, which I know, are actually not super healthy because they've used the process and path of these biohacks as yet another tool to fix themselves, right? And so what I mean by that is their relationship to these actions is one of fixing, just not good enough. I got to get better. And they're never in a state of ease. And so our relationship to the act is much more important than the act itself. So I would recommend seeing uh, and discerning the selection of, am I going to fast or not from a, essentially is um, additional practice of structure helpful for my life right now or not from that perspective. Well, that's a different way of looking at it completely. It's a completely different way of looking at it. Yeah, because it does have benefits. Sure. It does, it does give you a beneficial result. It, mm -hmm. it is more discipline. It is more structure. Mm -hmm. But understanding, I mean, do, do you need that structure? Or are, are there other less taxing ways to achieve the same result? Yeah, absolutely. That There's are more sustainable, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's um, essentially, I, I like to answer questions in a multi-layer way, right? Because some of you will hear, yep, that. Some of you will hear, oh my God, the, the relationships reflecting upon all of my decisions and, and processes and now being clear on the relationship to the path is life-changing. There's that layer. And then there's, of course, the layer of, yeah, you can, you can fast. It's good. It's healthy for you. So there was a, it was like a little fractal answer for all of you. There are many forms of fasting other mm -hmm. than just with food. Yep. It can be um, attitudes, could be speech, could be uh, emotions, um, can follow uh, other forms. 
It's applying the moderation lever. Absolutely. That's really what it is. It's the moderation lever. And, and really what you're doing with fasting, David, just to, to throw my little sense in there, is just consuming less. By putting it into a structured scenario where you do it within a certain hour, you're just consuming less. It's a moderation thing. It's a moderation lever. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it to Sam's question because yep. this is one I was definitely wanting to hear today for sure. And he says, do you have any specific recommendations of increasing our immune system to protect against COVID? I know this is a softball for you, so would love to hear this one. Yeah, that, that's super easy. There's, um, and maybe I'll put Aldi's information here. So um, I would recommend everyone contacting a company called Way Labs. They're like a pharmaceutical company based out of California that took traditional Chinese medicine and standardized it. And they have a company or a, a product called uh, Silver Flower. And Silver Flower replicated a formula that they used in China in studies to show it took people with severe cases, severe reactions, and had a 90% success rate in relieving those severe actions in three days. It's like a $50, $40 product. I believe it'd be awesome for us to have that bottle on hand just in case. And many of my Maverick friends have done this. So that for sure. Um, on top of that, I think most people know of like vitamin D. I can have a whole list um, of stuff. And in fact, I have, just to save the moments, I've created a protocol because I get this question, as you can imagine, quite often. I've created a protocol, um, uh, a simple protocol to, to help with this. Christine, thank you. I appreciate the compliment in there. She says, Amy, you know the most amazing folks. Absolutely, the Maverick Magic people. Steve is definitely among them. How long have you been a Maverick now, Steve? Uh, uh, right after, essentially, you got married. Right after Jamaica, I joined. I actually joined while you guys were in uh, Jamaica. So how long is that? That is going to be six years. Six years, yeah. 2013, seven years. Yeah, so the, the protocol I just put is a super simple one. And I'll just tell you, it's every human, if you're not taking vitamin D with K, DK, uh, along with magnesium, this is the super simple thing that every human can benefit from. There's a study that shows that if we can get our vitamin D levels to uh, between 60 to 80, the risk of death from a virus decreases by 97%. Keep in mind, the vaccine effectiveness is 92%. Vitamin D at that level can decrease your death from a virus by 97%. Now, the wow. magnesium in, yeah, is in there because you need magnesium to sort of activate uh, vitamin D. So at the fundamental, I mean, I could list 10 other things, but this is super basic. I highly recommend. Very good question, Sam. Thank you for that. I wanted to make sure that was on the record. Yeah. For sure. Any other questions? We've got Steve for 10 more minutes. As you can see, yep. we've got some really good information flipped around. Um, you know what? I'll throw one at you because I'd love for them to understand the 80-20 rule mm -hmm. when it comes to diets and when it comes to relationship with food, et cetera. Sure. sure. Yeah. So as you can imagine, I get the question a lot of nutrition, right? Healthy eating, what's the best diet and all that stuff. And usually when I get asked, like, what's the best diet, as you can tell, I don't answer that question. I go, context. And I, I would jokingly say the only diet that works for everyone is the chemical-free diet because no one benefits from arsenic. And so um, in general, the relationship to food is much, much, much more important than the actual food selection in a way. Right. And so, and I call them the three core values of food. And Damien actually already talked about them. So one is eat the rainbow right? Um, different colorful foods, because again, people ask me, hey, what's the best, most nutritious blank? They're, that doesn't exist. We, our bodies um, wants a variety of different uh, phytonutrients, right? Vitamins and minerals and stuff. So eat the rainbow. Second is the 80-20, right? So what that means is if 80% of the time you're following these core values, the other 20% um, really doesn't matter. The only time that this doesn't apply is if you actively have a severe health condition. Like if you have cancer, you, you probably want to be like 95.5 or maybe 100 zero until you're cancer free. But if you're relatively healthy, 80-20 is great. 
And 80-20 really ties into the third core value, which is, and I already spoke about this, which is um, don't judge food. Just like don't judge anything, right? Because the moment you label a food as that's bad for you, two things happen based on psychology. You, you want it more. And two, the moment you eat it, you feel awesome. But the moment after, you're either feeling guilt or shame, right? That's the pattern. You're either feeling guilt or shame after you eat it. And again, remember that Russian doll, the energy, right, is the much bigger than biology. The emotion of guilt and shame is infinitely more unhealthy than whatever calories or proteins, carbs, fats, or whatever was in that food, right? So we completely bypass the reality and just don't judge food. I mean, sure, um, broccoli is, you know, higher nutrient value than cheesecake, but cheesecake isn't bad. You know, I joke, cheesecake never took a knife in its hand and killed someone, right? Just a little less healthy than, than broccoli. So those are the, the core values of food. So I see a question. Um, actually, there's a bunch of questions. So see, thank you. You talked about becoming the thing. Uh, is there a process for that? Um, and then, Ray, get ready to go on Audible with yours right after. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not aware of a formula for becoming the thing. I do believe that once you hold, once you're aware of the intention of becoming a thing, I believe that each indi individual person can have their own sort of unique path and explore in becoming the thing. Uh, I know that's a very nebulous answer, um, but nothing comes to mind in terms of just do this and just do this because it's such a it's such a deep practice. You know, it would be like saying, you know, I don't know, in a religious context, this is exactly how you connect to God. Well, I think everyone's going to have a very different relationship to it because becoming something is a very big container, right? It's not like a very tactical thing. This is a pretty big thing. And so I guess my, my advice is just hold on to that intention and recognize a little allocate your attention from the thing and some of the intention as you're doing a thing into becoming the person that does the thing. Okay, I think there was one more. Very nice, Ray. Do you want to hit it on Audible? Yep, let's do it. Yes, my my um, concern is is our youth. I saw something early in the pandemic. A doctor, I don't recall his name. Long story short, he said one of the biggest issues is going to be from the pandemic mm -hmm. is changing the sedimentary, you know, the, the lifestyle. People staying at home, not eating properly, on and on and on. Yep. Now they're saying that, and it's true. And now we're saying that that. Uh, I just saw something on the news the other day that one in three children are obese. The numbers yep. of suicide are up. The teenagers are up. And to me, the problem is, okay, the media is talking about it. What are we going to do about it? You yep. know, talking is just not going to cut it. And so I, um, I, I'm looking at what things that can be done. I'm in Connecticut right now. Um, you were, um, they can get out, walk. I love to walk, get the kids in groups, separate them, get them out of the house. We did church. I'm going to be real brief. We did church from the beginning in our parking lot. And the pastor would be on a platform and everyone would be in their cars maintaining social distance. My mind said, if we did that with the children, get out of the house. We have a large parking lot. Go to the, the parking lot, wave to each other, say hi, et cetera, et cetera. I think they need to get out of the house and do some things um, that are just for them. And, and we know the, the, the mindset is everything. And so um, I, I just feel that, that it's, and I keep, so then I get a call from a guy last week, because I was living in California. He just got out of prison, young man, very hardworking. Uh, I, my grandson, I hadn't heard from in ages, called me the other day, grandpa, I have, I have issues. We did a live stream changed his whole mindset yesterday while he literally sat on the phone. We could see each other and, and talk and he's, his mindset is different. And so I'm determined to do more Great. stuff. I lost my daughter in July in my arms. She had a blood clot. She shut down. And so that changes your, 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 your perspective on time. Yeah. But again, she, she had a master. She was a nutritionist. And so that's just where I'm at. I want to get some suggestions 
on what we can do yep. to, um, to help our youth. Because our parents, are, that, our parents are not good parents and they're not as stuck home and they're not necessarily good or good teachers or good, you know, well, my kids are not stuck in that environment. So that's my, that's where I'm at. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you thank you for all that you've done. Yeah, no, uh, I just want to honor you for sharing that story um, and surfacing this very, very important topic. And I'll, I'll sort of dive into it a little bit deeper than usual. Yes, um, between social media, between the chemicals in our food, and of course, the way in which COVID has been um, experienced and managed, those three, absolutely, there's going to be a um, huge demand for mental health for all humans, let alone kids. Right? Kids just, we tend to care a lot about because they're kids, but for all humans of all ages, for sure. And so here's the good news. Um, whenever you push a swing <clears throat> uh, five feet forward and you let go, that swing must swing five feet back. And so trust that the more disorder that happens, there must be equal amounts of order that goes the other way. This is the law of rhythm and polarity. This is the beauty of having the hermetic laws. <clears throat> and you can look into history and you can see this pattern. You don't see it that day, that week, that month, that year, but you look at it, you zoom out in a decade or 20 or 50 years, you go, yeah, there, everything is in rhythm and pattern. And the reason I'm offering this is it sucks to feel like there's this burden and worrisome that we must do all this because that energy is not serving for us. And then we project and reflect that energy back, back into humanity. And so part of that is that is just trusting that everything is in rhythm. So I'll set that larger container first. And now we'll go into strategy and I'll go into tactics. The strategy of this is to exemplify the ease ourselves. I'll, I'll give an example versus teaching. I mean, I think teaching is it's fun, but it's, it's not the most effective way. I'll give an example. So two years ago, maybe three, my daughter was making tea, so she's nine, so she's like six or seven. Um, we were at, the, we have a local beach here, uh, lakefront. And apparently some kids threw rocks at her because she came running and crying. And I was like, what happened? And she goes, these girls threw rock at, rocks at me. And my response was, well, you're so lucky. And she's like, why? I was like, well, you get to practice forgiveness more often than other kids. And she goes, oh, okay, and just ran off. And so when we exemplify seeing the world in a different way and seeing the gift in everything, that is the greatest teacher, right? So you see these Facebook memes from like Gandhi and people like, when I was young and not wise, I tried to change the world. When I became wise, I realized I just changed myself. And so my strategy is as we reveal the, and embody and become the person that naturally sees the value and the gift in everything, we literally vibrate that out. And I'll, I'll science this for you. 90% of a human's DNA, they used to call junk DNA because it didn't make proteins. So They're like, it doesn't do anything. And so now we know that they make photons. 90% of our DNA makes light particles. We're literally a light bulb. And so these light particles, these photons broadcast away from us. And anything, if you study physics, any particle can also be a wave. Any wave can carry data. And so our being, our internal state, we're literally 24-7 broadcasting that data out into every human in the universe, right? Light goes pretty far, pretty fast. These photons are broadcasted from us. We are, we are light beings tricked into thinking we're just humans. This is science. You just look up biophotons, right? This is not like woo-woo spiritual stuff. This is hardcore science at this point. Here's the funny part. We've known this since the 70s. When I say we now, I don't mean like last year. We've known this since the 70s. I trace back the earliest studies I could find on biophotons is from 78. And so we're infinitely more capable and powerful than we realize, but yet we get to impact the world in a carefree way, if that makes sense. Because if you see it as a burden, we then we're vibrating burden and we need to, it's horrible. So as much as all the stuff about water, pesticides, and all that stuff, I know that if I die right now, 
it doesn't matter. Someone else will go and help humanity because the swing has to swing the other way. The other way I said it is I've embodied being completely unimportant because our hyper attachment to importance is a trap. Right? It feels very burdensome and worrisome and all that stuff. And that energy will find that why why is people around me stressed and worried and all that stuff? It's because we see such importance in the thing. Right. So we can do important work. Like I have a goal of impacting a billion people, but I am not attached to the importance of it. Right. And so that would be my advice from a strategy perspective. So now I'll answer tactical. Most people want the tactical stuff, just like to give the other layers. The tactical things would be know that um, just like everything I said, brain health, we now know the anxiety, depression, and the mental health. If we want to see it from a biological perspective, it's brain inflammation. Right. So reducing the grains, right? Drinking clean water, um, talks about judgment. Those three things will go a very long way. And someone asked me about, there was a question about working out. So yes, I think moving our bodies are, are important, but be very careful how you frame that to a child. And here's what I mean. Um, imagine saying, hey, let's go move and fully express our joy versus let's go work out to get in shape. Which one would you rather have your child practice? Express joy, of course. Yes. And so be very careful how we frame movement because we've been taught it's a workout. It's a tool that we're using to get buff, to get better indoors, to get healthy or whatever. However, if movement was a way to express themselves, to, to remember their joy, to play, that infinitely is more healthy than the workout, right? So yes, I think movement is extremely important as long as it's framed in, in that context, absolutely. I want to add that I had a week after she passed, mm. um, I had a thought, because I had to give her actually mouth to mouth, and my girlfriend had to give her a heart, and so paramedics came and they tried. And Anyway, a week later, I had a thought, and it, it was that, and in trying to restore her breath, she breathed life back into me. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm a faith person. And so right. I, that's nothing but God. And so I'm determined more than ever to do and give and share. And so just like you said, I just glanced at this. I'm here now, not by accident, but it wasn't a plan either. I'm looking through my emails, clicked on it, and here I am. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful to be here. But so much stuff like that has been happening. The call from Rayfield, it just, you know, and on and on and on. And so I know more and more that that's, I had, I had thought that you got to be listening to hear your calling. I'm hearing my calling. And I so that. I appreciate you, Damien. I appreciate you. And we, we can do this. Like you said, we think we can't. We can't. We're, cons you know, anyway. Thank you. I, see, I, I really appreciate it. I'm, I will definitely be following up on your website, more information. And again, Damon, wow. This is my first, but wow. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I just, Ray, I want to say I, I got goosebumps when you said that your daughter breathed life into you. Um, and those goosebump moments are, are very powerful. And I just want to share with everyone that in physics, energy can't be created or destroyed remember that. <laughs> and so life goes on right and so when when someone lets go of their physical form their energy absolutely still exists so yeah another one quick and i'll go is that i was i went to a funeral and the pastor had said uh, it was someone at the church's brother and he said often we'll say i'm sorry for your loss mm -hmm. but he said there's not a loss. Mm -hmm. We know where they're at. Yeah. And I thought, wow. You know, I just went to the funeral to be supportive for somebody else. And again, I got lifted up. And so I will never say that again. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a different way of looking at it, you know, and, yeah. and uh, it's, it's sorry for your loss versus I'm just truly sorry. Yeah. yeah. No, right. No, and 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 because what you know, there, there's more than loss here. There's there's what you are going through, what your family is going right. through, how you guys are living your going on to live your life, you know, with an absence, with a major void. And so, 
it's it's really you know i think i think it it, it speaks more to it when it's just truly i'm sorry right Not the loss, but I'm sorry. sorry and then and like you said and then what can, what are we going to do about it so i have to in the grocery store i keep seeing people that resemble her right after i see a, a young lady today that resemble my daughter and then on the intercom they go Liz, please come to the office. Liz, and that's my okay, daughter's I'm gonna, name. I'm going to give you something that's going to help you, and then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to honor Steve's time and let him roll. And I just, again, thank you. Yeah, no, absolutely. But I'm going to give you something I think is going to be very helpful because it's been helpful for our family. And uh, as, it, as it turns out, when Sophia passed, it was on Elephant Day. And it, as it turns out, she really, really loved elephants. And it wasn't by accident that she went ahead and gave into her battle on elephant day. It wasn't by accident. I'm truly a believer of that. So one of the things that's been really helpful in our family for my wife and I is that there is not a week that goes by. Well, unless we're quarantined, like we are now fighting COVID, but there isn't a week that goes by that we don't see an elephant on a wall, an elephant in a picture, an elephant online, an elephant on TV, an elephant. And you know, we know that it's her energy presenting itself to us to continue to live the joy of our memory of her. And it's not just memory, it's that current moment as well. It's that current moment as well. I, I swear, I walk into the darndest places and smack, boom, elephant right there. And I know what it's all about. So anyway, Ray, um, that, that, uh, yeah, there you go, man. There you go. <laughs> Yep. Give that one to you. Steve, listen, I just want to honor you. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for your wisdom today. Everybody, as you know, I'm I'm sure we could keep you here for a whole nother hour with questions because yep. this is such a deep topic and you're just so amazing. So thank you, Steve. You're what welcome. I would like, if you want to say some final words, and then I want to open up everybody to just say and honor you and thank you and all that. But before we do that, Steve, if you want to just say any final words. Yeah, yeah. My Final word would be, I believe that we can live in utopia as we continue to practice something I call omni-benefit. And I'll explain to you what omni-benefit is, right? So we hear in the language, like, that's a win, right? And so if there's a win, someone had to lose. Then we start to hear win-win, like both people benefit, like something happened and both people benefit. However, a lot of times getting to the end destination where both people benefited, there were some sacrifices and maybe some people got hurt or the environment got hurt. I encourage all of you to live with what I call omni benefit, which is the way in which you're getting there, the planning process, the path already benefits every human in earth, as well as the destination benefits every human involved in earth. And this is not as, hard as it seems if we just set this intention our consciousness figures this out i believe now is the greatest time for those of us that have businesses that have the ability to affect another human to impart i'm hoping that i'm like throwing a boulder into the pond and I'm hoping the ripple of this omni benefit concept gets embodied that's my my wish beautiful thank you steve yep. all right everybody Go ahead and go on Audible now and give our man his due. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Dr. Thank Steve. you. Thank you. Thank that you, was Steve. amazing. Oh, is this going to be recorded? Have you recorded this, Damon? Absolutely recorded, but we'll we'll talk to you about how we uh, deliver these this content. <laughs> you do that. Thank we you. want to encourage you guys to do what you did here today for Steve to show up. And, yep. you know, it's so much more engaging that way. So. Yep. Thank you, Sheila. Good to see you as well. Were you going to say something, Sheila? You're muted. I, I just wanted to say thank you because it was, it was awesome. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, right in keeping with the last one, you know, with um, Alana. Yeah. You know? yeah. So that was great. Thank you. We're keeping it going on, on overdrive. Right. Preston, thank you for showing as well, man. Yes. Oh, I let, you know what? I talk to Steve a lot, but damn, every time he does these things, I'm sitting here... I'm trying to work out and I'm taking notes instead. I can't, it's hard to get my workout done. So you, you guys are amazing. Steve, you're amazing, man. Thank you. Thank you. No, no, no doubt. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate yes. you so much, man. I appreciate you. Uh, have yes. a thank you. Thank you. Right. It was really mind blowing. It's wonderful lecture, but 
all the opening of mind and thoughts when you're putting them all together. And that's what our incarnation and all the thoughts are going to build up in that one. I right. think that's what you touched on that too. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Yes, yes, definitely. Thank you. That was it. I, I just wanted to say, am I on? <laughs> you are. Oh, okay. I just want to say that uh, every one of God's creation is unique. There is only one you. There's only one me. I don't care if you're triplets. They're different. And everyone is unique in his own right and important to everyone else. Absolutely. It's funny that you say that. I appreciate that, Carl, because when I was picking the, the third thing, I was, I was, t it was a toss up between judgment and comparison, which what you're talking about is letting go comparison. I was like, oh, I went with judgment. So thank you for adding that. See, the universe, God works out. Amen. Call the other one. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Thank you. All right. Of course. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Outstanding. Thank you, Damien. That was, that was powerful. Good, 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 good. Yes, yes, that was good. And and Ray, so just to finalize my thought there so that it's actually a complete thought, because I realized I might have left you on a little bit of a clip there, is to try to identify something with your daughter, whether it's an animal or whether it's a sign, a butterfly, who knows, flower, you know, whatever it is, that will would that that will identify with you and your daughter, and you'll know it'll speak to you. You don't have to look. Uh, just be having your awareness receptors open for it and, and you'll identify that and it will continue to show up. So that's that's been really healing for us and actually uplifting in a big way. Very positive, very positive. So everybody, um, thank you so much for your time today. Um, if you want, we can do, you know, we can hang out for 10 to maybe 15 minutes, but I do want to get back to my wife. Um, you know, if you want, uh, Derek, you can go ahead and stop the recording now, it, or, or you can keep it going. You can just edit it later, but we'll go for about another 10 minutes or so. Does anybody have a topic that you want to throw up that you would like me to address or anybody else on the call to address or any wins you want to share or any observations of, of, of or clarity, points of clarity from what you just experienced? I mean, just it's open mic. Hit it. I've got something to say. Um, there's, I'm not, I wasn't that familiar with a gentleman called, he's passed, but it's uh, Miles Monroe. And he talks about mindset and the, how important mindset was. And he basically, I'm going to be brief. And so he talked about the reason the lion is the king of the jungle is because of his mindset, not because of his size, his strength, his speed, his intelligence. And I like watching the animal shows. And so it's been oh, several weeks till when I'm flipping through the channel and I see this a lion, and he's completely surrounded by hyenas, and I mean, I'm, and I mean, a lot of them, and they're just tearing them up. And I said, this guy's not going to survive. And he's fighting and fighting. And the narrator says, off, you know, off in the distance, there's another lion. It turns out the other, it's the other lion's cousin. His cousin looks up, comes running towards the, the first lion, and all 20 hyenas ran off. And that to me was an amazing. Wait a minute, it's 22 to two, they ran off without a fight. So the point I'm making is this, is this goes back to mindset. It made them run off. So, so last week, I, let me see if I can find that video. So if you do a Google, a YouTube search for a lion attacked by hyenas, you'll see the action. And to me, it's just one of those things that's a wake up call in that it's not the lion, but how, how we look at ourselves and like, just like Jimmy Steve was saying, we identify ourselves as a loser, as this, what everybody else calls us, and it's changed. And so I'm, again, working more on mindset for me, mindset for the people, particularly young people. Thank you for the share, Ray. Awesome. I don't usually offer anything, but <clears throat> what Ray said about mindset really struck a nerve. For the past month of January, the only discipline I've been able to follow is every day there's a YouTube video. Uh, Brian Scott's the guy, and he's doing a Dr. Neville Good Gooder, who was actually a preacher back in the 60s. And it's 25 minutes, and you do a little breathing exercise up front. 
And then you just repeat over and over, something wonderful is happening to me now. Something amazing is happening to me now. Something fantastic is happening to me now. I tell you, some days something happens and it just, wow, something amazing just happened to me. It's the mindset, speaking the word, writing the word down, and it comes to you. Yeah. No, the mindset is so powerful. And, you know, this reminds me, actually, one of my mentors, many of you know, Tom Hopkins is one of my mentors who taught me how to sell. And uh, Tom Hopkins, uh, you know, he said there's an answer that you can say, no matter how bad your day is, when someone's asking you how you're doing today, and you'll always be in integrity. And when they say how you're doing, let's say you're having one of the worst days. How you doing today? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> right? And and it's it's uh, just in how we we really the mindset and how we approach things. And and by the way, that conversation you're having with that individual is going to be so different. Instead of how you doing? Oh, things suck, things suck. And then you go into a conversation. Instead, it's like, oh, unbelievable because it could be unbelievably good or it could be unbelievably bad. It's still in integrity, right? The other thing that, uh, that that goes along in those lines with mindset, um, we used to answer the phone back when, and you know our you know card service, we were a card service global solution back then, and we would answer the phone. It's a great day at Card Service Global Solutions. How you doing today? Or my name is Jen. How are you today? And I got to tell you that little one move that I made. Uh, set every conversation in a very positive tone, even with someone that might have been completely disgruntled at the time or upset about a certain situation or a billing mishap. I mean, we're talking 20 years ago. But, uh, you know, it's it's just, uh, hey, it's a great day. Thank you for calling Card Service Global Solutions. This is Renee. How can I help you? That is everything. It's mindset. It's all in positivity. Um, I loved Steve's piece today about how with the positivity, there is a polar opposite. There's just no way around it. And understanding that, having a different relationship with that, that was very, uh, that was mind provoking right there. That was provocative. I loved that. That was amazing. All right. Anybody else? Anybody want to chime in with any topic or thought or comment? Or Yeah, you can't. Uh... You can't release the or pick up the positive without releasing the negative. Absolutely true. Dr. Carl, you and I will get together over the weekend if you got some time. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. All right, uh, again, I apologize oh, for no, all the mishaps. No, no worries. I've just been on nursing duty and by the hour. And I know what that's like, I brother. I know you do, sir. I know you do. All right. Yes, Sam. Good to see you, sir. Take care. Yeah, we're going to be wrapping it up here in just a few minutes. If anybody else, anything, uh, by the way, just so you guys know, we are going to do an encore. If you didn't see what we did the other day where we released a, one of Go Mobile's mobile solutions, our SMS platform, many of you are already white label partners of that. We're going to do an encore tomorrow. It's going to be a recording of exactly what we did a couple days ago, but I'll be in there in the chat. I've got some time. I'm just here quarantined down in nursing Nick. So I'll be in there. If you had some questions about that white label opportunity, it's super sick. It's a great, it's a great, for those of you that don't already have it in your arsenal, it's, it's a no brainer. So come join me tomorrow. But what else? What do you, what do you guys got going on for the weekend? What, what time tomorrow? Damian? Tomorrow. I don't know, Derek, maybe you can let us know. I don't even know what time. Email. I'll find out from the email. Yep. But Derek, put it in the, um, put it in the chat here as well. What do you got going on this weekend, Martin? Anything big? Oh, just uh, we are preparing for the snow, uh, to use better words, the snow fun uh, nice. that's about to have here. Yeah, ice storm that's hitting us here in uh, Texas. So everybody's in a state of panic because uh, it's not supposed to do that here. <laughs> so we don't yeah. know what to do. But uh, it's it's uh, what I was really struck with. I really wish I could have gotten here earlier, but it's the things that are happening now. Um, I've always been uh, years ago, and I came across NLP. So a lot of what Dr. Steve's talks about is neurolinguistic programming, which is beautiful. I words have power. 
they always I actually started working on those years ago. So it was very refreshing to hear uh, towards the end when I got there, the way you talk to yourself, the way you talk to others, and how the words you use in your life manifest the future that you're trying to begin. And I've been talking about you know, goals and things like that. And I talk about this every time I'm here, and I'm going to make that plea again to all of you. It's time to show up. If you're not showing up, it's time for you to show up. The world is in a lot of pain right now, and they need the magic that is represented in this call. They Absolutely. need you badly. And, um, you know, it, it more so in ways that you ever need the level of division, the level of fear, the level of angst. And it doesn't really need to be that because there's actually massive abundance, even in things like a pandemic, massive, amazing things. My business tripled during the pandemic. That's like a strange, the strangest thing. I'm actually looking at getting free from my day job this year, possibly, with what? the crazy things, cr with the crazy things that are happening. Yet we're supposed to be freaked out. Well, that's because I don't watch the news. I don't look at some of these things, and I chose to do some of those positive words. I talk about the seeds that we're planting. The harvest isn't yet there yet, but as John Ashraf said, you cannot sow the fields and reap the harvest in the same season. You have to wait for the right season. So you must make sure you guys are planting your seeds right now. And some of you on this call have chosen to hide. Some of you have chosen, for whatever reason, to not show up. The world needs the magic that is you. All of you are literal magic in energy. Magic and energy are interchangeable. And we need you not to bottle that up. Some of us have heart. Some of us have, have trauma. And I understand that. I'm not saying to diminish that. That is not my intention. I'm saying at this time, the world desperately needs its, its, uh, its Avengers. We need to come out in force really, really badly. Um, if not now, then when? Leadership. So it's, it's actually more than leadership. Leadership is actually fine. You just can't, you can't have a million chiefs. Um, somebody has to be air quotes an Indian, whatever that, that expression means. We, but it's about whether you choose to be or not. Um, and so like one of my goals this year, this year I decided to set, set an intention for the year. I did a goal planning at the beginning of the year, but then I decided to do an intention, which was inspired by a talk I got from Lisa Nichols. And uh, anybody know what my intention for 2021 is? I will tell you, it is to blow my damn mind. <laughs> I want to see on December 31st and look back and I'm going to be like, you did that? Oh, my hey, God, I did that. My goal literally this year is to blow my damn mind. There you go. Um, and that doesn't mean only in money. It's in I have a whole bunch of things that I'm setting into motion because you must approach this from a place of abundance. People need to see you approaching the world in a perspective of abundance. Whether you have it or not, that is planting a seed that will eventually harvest and manifest into the natural greatness that is yourselves. But if we choose to hide that greatness, we're diminished. So I plead, I beg, I will get on knees. Y'all are amazing magic. Please let it out. Don't hold it in. I'm done. <laughs> All right. Well, here, buddy. <laughs> nice. And I'm going to continue making Philly cheesesteaks. So. Yeah, this is the cooking hour. Martin, no. <laughs> and, and Damien, you know, for me, I, I feel validated because, you know, many a times, uh, you know, we've encountered, you know, different difficult situations that have been, you know, uh, you know, death in the family or something negative that, that has happened. And I, and I recall saying, you know, well, this is what we learned from this. And I would get back some stairs and say, well, wait a minute, you're, you're missing the point. This person did this wrong. And I thought, okay, what, what do we get out of judge? Like, uh, like Dr. Young said, of judgment, of judgment. It's like, okay, how can we turn this, what happened today as a learn something that we can learn from. And so I've always felt like, uh, I always kept that to myself, you know, after that, because I felt like, okay, now they're judging me on because I'm focusing on, hey, you know, this is the, uh, the positive that they came, came, that came out of this, and there is no positive. And so, 
by listening to Dr. Young today, I'm like, okay, I kind of was, uh, I feel like, okay, you were in the right, in the right frame of, of mind to start to continue th- you know, thinking that way. And also uh, k- kind of put me on my path of what is my identity? And yeah. I realized that that is part of my identity. And I've been working against it, against my own gut feeling of how to react and say things because of what people would say or, or about what I had to say. So listening to him today really kind of just said, okay, well, put that aside and just say the things that how you feel them and uh, without thinking of the judgment from others uh, affecting you. So it was thank profound. you. It was not only the judgment of others and it was profound. He identifies his definition of success living day to day without any self-judgment. Yes. So absolutely. that all I felt was very profound. Absolutely. I have to and say when he I, said that that was a Mufasa moment. It was like, ooh, Mufasa. say it again. Oh, ooh, yeah. say it again. <laughs> And Damon, uh, that has nothing to do with the uh, uh, with the talk, but I I I caught that, and I'm like, uh, what is that? What is a maverick? Okay, Did so mention- yeah, so so uh, one of my good friends, uh, Yannick Silver, who's been in the internet marketing world for for you know uh, since it started, uh, you know, he started a company uh, about ten, well, now twelve years ago, called the Maverick One Thousand, and he has set out to assemble. Uh, catalysts of changing the way the game of business is played and actually running, you know, conscious level businesses that are looking to make a positive impact in the world. And a lot of the Mavericks are, you have to be, you know, a a seven figure business to qualify. So it's a super high caliber group, but seven, eight, nine figure business leaders are in this group and they all have different expertise um, and they all had different talents, as you saw last week with Ilana. Boy, that was amazing. This week with Steve, that was amazing. We had uh, Logan Christopher as well. That was amazing. So we're going to continue to have these maverick magic people, as we call them, um, for the weeks to come. So this is, the you know, and and people keep asking about replays and people keep asking about that. This is really good stuff. And we want you here live. We want you here live to engage with our speakers, to give our speakers, which rightfully so, a nice, good, engaging audience, which I'm so proud of all of you and your questions, Joe, and your questions, Dr. Carl, and and even even if they're in the chat, all of you. And so that's what we're doing right now. We've realized in 2020 that this value exchange of us doing this for you is really beneficial, and it's really helping out. It's helping people with their mindset, with their families, and their business across the, the board. And that's why we're doing it. And, you know, I'm, I'm blessed and honored to be in that group that you asked about, Joe, and to know and have access to this wisdom and that they're willing to share. You know, they may not all be willing to come on to the Go Mobile Community little zoom and on a Friday happy hour, but the ones that are, um, I really, truly want you guys to take great value. But more than take great value, you've heard me be harp on this for 10 freaking years now, take action with what we learn because this is good stuff this is stuff you could pay thousands of dollars for so please please take action with this stuff even if it's just changing the way you think about things that's action okay so yeah thank you it's the top of the hour i'm going to go ahead and sign off now i want to keep these things short you know right now because i want to go uh take care of nick see how she's doing um, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. I hope this was awesome. Um, we are working as a company on a replay idea. Maybe we'll monetize that because we're just doing this for free, right? And we need to monetize something. So maybe we'll come up with a replay concept. We've been talking about it up in the uh, in, in our Oval Office on how we can do that, and, and we'll figure it out. But stay tuned for that. But thank you guys for showing up. Appreciate it. Maybe I'll see some of you on the Encore tomorrow for SMS Pro 360 if you want to get a look at that in a real live demo and hear Daniel's amazing story how he bought SMS Pro 360 about five years ago like many of you and he finally decided in the pandemic in quarter four to rip off the shrink wrap and take a look at what the hell it was and was blown away about all of the assets and value that was there and then he started to monetize 
And uh, so far this year alone, he's already brought in $9,000 monetizing the platform. And he teaches you on that webinar that we did that you'll see tomorrow exactly what he did. So hopefully we'll see you tomorrow. If not, have a great weekend and we'll see you next week. Love you all. Can you send us a link? Yes. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, David. Thank you, Thank you, David. Love you all. Love you all. Seriously. I really Say hi to Nikki. I will definitely do that. Big hugs. Big hugs. All right, guys. All right. Go mobile. Or go home.